I used to work as a cashier at a BP that was right off the interstate. It doubled as a truck stop and was open 24 hours. I had worked there for about a year, so I was fairly comfortable with the job and I was used to working night shifts alone, despite being a smaller person. So I was working one night and everything was going as usual. It was about 1 a.m. and I saw a pickup truck pull in. Three passengers got out and entered the store. The two men were wearing camouflage outfits and the woman was wearing jeans and a sweater. The men talked to the woman outside of the door before entering and then they all went straight to me at the counter and asked for some cigarettes. As the one man was paying, the other one went to the other side of the store looking at drinks. I looked at the woman and realized that she had a look of panic on her face. I immediately felt in my gut that something bad was going on. We made eye contact and she mouthed the words, help me. Then the man grabbed his cigarettes with one hand and the woman's arm with the other and yelled at his buddy that they were ready to go. I was only 19 and wasn't really sure what to do, so I waited until they walked out the door and slid my hand under the counter and hit the panic button. About five to ten minutes later, the cops got there and I told them what happened. They looked at the surveillance videos and told me that they were investigating a kidnapping with a description of that same vehicle. I told them which direction they went on the interstate and the rest of the officers left after them while I gave my statement to the one who stayed behind. I never did find out if they caught them or not. In college, I would go home every other weekend to work at the job I had since high school. I would drive directly from campus after my last class on Friday to my job. After my shift was done, I'd go back to my parents' house, which was out in the middle of nowhere. My parents weren't yet home when I got back from work. They often spent their Friday and Saturday evenings drinking like they were the ones in college. So the house was dark and since it was mid-fall, so was the yard, except for that one yard light. I pulled into my normal parking spot got out of the car and then turned to open the back door of my car and get my backpack out of the back seat. That's when I noticed that the bathroom light was on. Was that light on when I pulled up? It must have been, right? As I was contemplating the light and reaching for my backpack, there was suddenly a very angry looking old woman standing in the window staring at me. She was very pissed off at me, and I knew it. We stood there staring at each other for a good 10 seconds when my parents pulled into the driveway and distracted me from my stare down. By the time I turned back, the light was still on, but the woman was gone. About two years ago, I was driving home from a family reunion pretty late at night, and the drive was about two hours. I didn't stay the night because I had to be back for work the following day. Most of the drive was on roads with dense bushes and trees on either side, the real creepy ones you see a lot in movies. I had been driving about 45 minutes, and I was starting to get really tired. I knew I wasn't going to last but I didn't come across any place that I felt I could park and safely sleep. After it became clear to me that I wasn't going to find a place to pull over and my tiredness wasn't going away, I did something very questionable. I pulled over to the side of the road onto the grass behind some bushes to try and hide my car from anybody else who was going to come past. I made a mental note that the time was 11.22 and then I fell asleep. Some time later, I was awoken by a scratching sound. I looked at the clock, 
11.50, the sound stopped after a few seconds, and because I was still extremely tired, I didn't bother looking around and simply went back to sleep. I was later awoken by the same sound, and it was now 12.40. This time, it really freaked me out, because the sound didn't stop. The thought ran across my mind that it was just an animal inspecting my car. But why would it return almost an hour after it had left the previous time? I looked in my rearview mirror and just managed to catch a glimpse of something running away into the forest. I got the hell out of there. There was a bend no more than a hundred yards up the road, and as I came around it, there was a car parked off to the side of the road with the driver's side door open. I slowed down just to look to see if anyone was in there. There wasn't. Then, I looked in my rearview mirror. I didn't see anything. And then all of the sudden, this guy comes sprinting around the corner. He starts screaming at me, shouting stuff like, Hey! Hey you! Get out of the car now! I sped off. I never saw the guy again. I once had to work at a very late shift at the funeral home to prepare a body for a viewing the following morning. I think I finally finished my work around midnight. It was winter and I ended up getting snowed in at the funeral home that night. I had to stay the night until the plows came early in the morning to plow me out. Let me tell you, it is creepy as hell sleeping in a funeral home knowing that there are 20 dead people in the basement, especially when you hear constant noises. I'm in college and I live on a campus in a dorm room. This dorm is very old and community style. I've been living here for two months with my roommate and everything has been fine. In the last week, We've had all of our lights in our room, just our room, go out. We've been trying to put maintenance requests in for the past week, but the website won't allow us to do it for some reason. Last night, I heard my roommate yelling from the hallway that her key wasn't working in the lock and that she needed in now. So I stumbled out of bed and was reaching for the lock on the door when I looked over and saw her asleep in her bed. I backed away from the door to go back to sleep, thinking that it had been a dream. I took a last look at my sleeping roommate and went to turn around to climb into my bed when I saw the shadow under the door. The door is a good inch or two off the ground, so I bent down to see if there was someone standing at our door or the one across the hall. When I was eye level with the crack, I saw a pair of boots facing the door. Then, the person turned away and I heard the stairwell door open. I couldn't even turn on the lights because the bulbs were out, so I crawled into bed with my lamp and sat there for an hour because I was freaking out. To get onto the girl's floor, you have to have the student card of someone that lives here. They locked the building up at midnight every night to make sure that only students and guests are inside. We've had problems with homeless people sleeping in the basements of some of our buildings. I was freaking out because the boots at the door were men's boots. I could have swore I heard my roommate's voice. I took care of my mentally handicapped cousin a few years back. She could get around well enough but due to severe arthritis in her knees and ankles, she had to be watched, helped into the bath, shit like that. I would go into her room in the morning, help her to her walker so she could go to the bathroom, and I would make her breakfast. One morning, I heard the water running in the bathroom when I went in to check on her. I had to pass her room on the way to the bathroom. When I did, I saw that she was in her rocking chair in the corner, her blanket over her head, and she was rocking back and forth. 
don't leave the water on, you're going to flood the place. I went into the bathroom to shut the faucet off, and my cousin was there, washing her face. I immediately ran back to the room, but it was just her blanket crumpled up on the rocking chair. My cousin wanted to know why I undid her bed. I didn't stay too long after that. When I was younger, I used to live by the woods and could see a cemetery from my back porch. One Easter, I remember waking up and seeing the Easter Bunny. I didn't tell anyone, but there was an extra Easter egg in my house that my parents didn't hide. Years later, when I was in high school, I asked my parents if they ever dressed up like the Easter Bunny and came into our room. They said they would never go through so much trouble. Then, my younger sister, who I shared a bunk bed with when this happened, said she remembers when the Easter Bunny came into our room. I was terrified that we both remembered seeing a person dressed as a bunny in our room. To make it even weirder, I told the friends I sat with at lunch what happened. One of the girls was my neighbor across the street. She told me one Easter a long time ago, she looked out her window during the night and saw the Easter Bunny standing in her driveway. It gave me chills. To this day, I am terrified of people who wear that costume. I had awesome parents who let me sleep in the living room because my sister was a light sleeper and I could stay up until dawn. But of course, I always ended up sleeping on the couch because Nick at night made me tired. One night, I wake up to a strange feeling, like an instinct. I just bolted into a sitting position and stared out the front window. We lived in rural Georgia, so you can imagine the magnitude of trees. In perfect light cast from the moon, I see a silhouette of someone in the tree in front of my house. The family dog dashes to the window and is snarling into the glass. Terrified, I run into my parents' room and try to explain to my parents that there is a strange person outside. My dad grabs something defensive. I tremble in my mom's arms until my dad comes back in and says that he saw no one and he wants me to go to bed. I decide to sleep in my regular bedroom. I tell my sister what happened. Dad is making regular rounds in the house with a cup of coffee. Everything is silent and calm, and I finally think to myself, I can sleep. Nope. I notice the man outside my window. He gives me a hush signal and runs away. He just turns around to run a straight line away. Every bit of this story is true. I grew up playing pool and going out of town for the weekend to play a tournament was common. My friends and I were in our early 20s and on a tight budget, so we decided to carpool and share a hotel room for the next tournament. We even found a fourth guy Bert to ride along with us. I had only met Bert once prior. He was a huge redneck with a wandering eye. Intimidating and drunk might be the best words to describe him. On the three hour ride to the tournament, Bert was already drunk and talking crazy shit about his wife. Apparently, they were going through a divorce and he was not happy about it. He eventually starts describing this fight where he has her on the floor with his foot on her neck and then cutting her throat. Everyone in the vehicle was like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? We all make it back home from the tournament and the following Monday, I get a call. It's the cops. Holy shit. They asked me the strangest questions about Bert. Did he have mud on his shoes? Did he mention his wife? What was his demeanor like on the trip? Weeks later, I would find out what really happened. Bert murdered his wife 
that Thursday night. The next afternoon, he gets in my car for a road trip. That fight that he described in the car wasn't just some fight. He was describing how he murdered her. I went on a road trip and shared a hotel room with this guy. I had a very frightening night last year. Out of the blue, I lived by myself, and late in the night, I got a phone call. My cell phone's volume was down very low, and I couldn't hear it ring while I slept. I woke up for no particular reason about an hour after the call. I grabbed my phone and looked at the screen, and it was a private number. I went back to sleep and thought nothing of it. I woke up again a couple hours later, and I looked on my phone to see that the same number had called 15 more times. That was enough to wake me up completely, and I saw that I had three new voicemails from that number. I listened to the first one that was left. A man whispered into the phone, I just crawled through the window in your dining room. That obviously made my hair stand on end, and I felt like I was going to pass out. I sat in bed, terrified, for a few minutes, thinking of what I should do next. I listened to the second voicemail. The man then said into the phone, Your bedroom door is locked. After hearing that, I immediately called 911. I told them, somebody was in my house. They proceeded with questions, and I didn't hear a single one. I was so scared. I stayed on the phone with them until two officers showed up at my house, and they searched the place. Eventually, I felt comfortable enough to let them leave, and when they did, I listened to the third voicemail. The man whispered into the phone, I am hiding in your house. After hearing that, I got in my car and drove to my sister's house and slept there that night. I didn't return home until the next day with more police officers, my sister, and her husband. The whole place was searched inside and out, and we all found nothing. Not a single sign of forced entry, nothing. Not a single phone call after that night and I need to tell myself it was just some kid trying to scare me.